Hello, my name is Dr. Michael Okreke. I welcome you to this YouTube channel. Today we're looking at a topic that says uh, beam analysis and here we're comparing analytical versus numerical predictions. This is something that a lot of times people that deal with finite element modeling or modeling generally, they just generate numerical results. Um, and they don't always think about how do you validate that result? How do you compare that numerical result to be sure that it's reliable? And in this case, we're going to compare an analytical prediction of a beam analysis with a numerical prediction. So if this is the kind of content that you like, please do subscribe to this YouTube channel uh, and click on the notification button so that when videos like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. If there are any videos, again, that you would like me to make, please do some suggest that in the comment section and I'll review that to see if I can make such videos to help you get started with modeling. So let's quickly look at the PowerPoint slide that explain the problem and how we want to go about dealing with this comparison between analytical and numerical predictions. So the problem that we're going to be dealing with is basically the, this, this problem. It's um, a, a cantilever beam. Um, as part of beam analysis and it's carry multiple loading three type of loading it's a solid cross-section beam like this um, it's carrying this different load it's a, a beam made of steel material and we're going to explore that and, and exploring this what we would like to do would be you know first and foremost think about the triangular load how do we represent it so basically it's a decrease in triangular load so using the question of a straight line the question of this line becomes to 3000 minus 750, where 750 is the slope of that line. Um, so we split up this model into three categories, four categories. First, we'll do one which is just a point load and compare the prediction. Then we'll do the moment load, the distributed load, uniform distributed load, or rectangular distributed load, and the triangular load. For each of these cases, we want to assess the prediction. Of course, we need to calculate the area moment of inertia for case one. We're going to be comparing our prediction uh, analytically with our numerical prediction. The same thing applies for the moment. The same thing applies for the distributed load. And finally, the same thing applies for the triangular load. Once we determine all that, hopefully when we bring them all together, we'll get a prediction of the final deflection and deflection of this beam and see whether this kind of matches with what we intended to do right from the beginning. So this is how we're going to go about this validation exercise. So let's quickly go over to uh, Abacus environment that we're going to use for, for this study. So here we are in an Abacus environment. So the first we're going to do, obviously, is to create the model. So if we go to the part section, double click on part. So I'm going to call this a beam. It's going to be a 2D beam. It's going to be deformable. It's going to be made from a wire because it's five meter, four meter long. Four times three gives me 12. So I make my sketching canvas to be about 12, um, 12. So we get to the center and then click on that. At the base, I like to specify the coordinates, so it is 0, 0, and 4, 0, being the coordinate position of this beam. So we've got the beam there, cancel procedure, click done. So we've got our beam. Then we go back to the top and create the material for this beam. Double click on materials. So I'm going to call this a steel material. The elasticity of the material, material will be 210 e to the power 9 and 0.33 is a Poisson ratio and we're happy with that. So we go back and create a profile. So the profile will be a rectangular profile at the top. I'm going to call it, you know, rect, rectangular profile for short. So it would ask me for the base. If we look at what is the base of the model. So the the diagram, the basically the, the rectangle is of base 100 millimeters and a height 200 millimeters. Of course, we need to convert that even to meters. Okay, so here we are. So the base is 0.1 meter and 0.2 meter is a height and a solid cross section. So that's done. Now we create our section. So we're going to call this a beam section. Um, it's going to be associated with the beam. Continue, accept the rectangular profile by default we've created and that gives us that then we go back to our beam and do a section assignment double click on that say so select the region you want to assign section on tick this select that click done so that's okay so we've got that beam selected now we need to think about the orientation of the beam so we'll click on here and the basis says select the region to be assigned clearly with this region we want 
done and then accept that default click ok so this gives us the beam we can visualize this beam um, okay maybe before we do that so let's think about the mesh so double click here on, so click on the mesh is predicting a mesh of 0.4 but i'll probably go something a lot less than that so 0.00, .00 maybe 0 yeah well, i don't know could do 0 1 something about that size okay and then we mesh that so at the base we select the mesh so we're happy with the mesh everything so we can go and view the rendered view so view path display option um, render and then click ok so this gives us the image of the sample that we are trying to create to see whether it's in a properly rendered state so that's the first thing so if we rotate this okay so it does look like it's in the rendered state of what we want okay so we've created the part We've created the domain, everything is in place. So we need to think about the assembly. So double click on assembly. It's a beam. That's fine. Look the assembly, double click on the step. So we call this bending step. Or bending step, whatever. So it's a static general, it's acceptable. So we we'll accept all that. And then so we we'll go all the way to the boundary condition. So it's a cantilever beam. So built in to the left so and it's an initial boundary condition based on displacement so we we'll see select the region so the region we want is here click done then it comes up with this window we we'll select accept that window so this is fine so we've got it fixed securely at that point then we now need to include the load so double click so the first thing we're going to hear is the point load so it's going to be bending associated with a concentrated force and then we we'll click that end okay done so we know that the bending load is minus 5000 so minus 5000 so this is fine now the next load is our moment load so again it's associated with the moment click at that same point which is where we're interested in at the back end of the model there so this is our moment load connected okay so how how much moment are we looking for the, the diagram that says our moment is 30,000 so let's just be sure this is correct so our moment is basically 30,000 newton meter so our moment is correctly specified click OK now the next thing we need to think of is the triangular so let's call it the rectangular dist load so the rectangular dist load is a line load okay and then at the base I select the bodies so we want it on that body click done and then okay how big so it's in the y direction that our load is going to be so what would that be so uh, we know it is 2000 but it is pointing downward so it's minus 2000 in the y direction so that's that's what we are looking for the triangular load is specified properly the rectangular load so we double click again we're now going to do our, our triangular triangle triangular distributed load okay so again it's still going to be a line load continue select the bodies that you want so we still want it associated with that click done now it gives us this window so we need to create a function that defines what we are trying to do so so we're going to call it triangular load function fxn so what would this mean okay basically it means that here would be 3000 minus 750 750 times x which is what we agreed would be the distributed loading function okay so this is fine we just need to use that triangular load as part of this distribution the y value will be one because well it's basically one um, so maybe minus one acting on the model on the body so you could see it shows you the triangular load is acting here so if we just open that and select the triangular load so you could see the triangular load decreasing the distributed load being constant 
point load at the end and the moment load there or visible in, in that. So we've got the model properly set. So but obviously we want to, as part of this verification, we want to check them one by one to make sure that it's working. So I'm going to turn off. So I'll swift, suppress those to leave the point load and then go here and, cl and click OK. My first job, my first job will be case one. I'll just call it point load. So let's run the first job and call it point load. Continue. OK. So we'll submit that job to run. Submit. So in this model, what this basically means is that we have only the point load active in our model. All the other models are not active. So we can say, okay, everything is fine. The job is completed. So we now suppress that point load and then release the moment load. So we resume the moment load before we, so we can create that so let's say if we go back here we'll get okay moment load continue okay so we've got a moment load so we'll submit that so again it's running so we can go back and while it is running so and wait for it to complete so the job has finished so again look at the info so it's completed so we suppress the moment load now look at the triangular load the, the rectangular load so we we'll resume that and then we we'll we'll call, we'll call it rectangular distributed load so that's basically the simulation for that so we we'll submit submit that and um, and again it will run and give us an information in the end to make sure okay that's completed so we we'll suppress that and then go back to the triangular load and resume so we'll create the job for that so we're going to call this um, triangular dist load triangular distributed load so we we'll submit okay now so we we'll submit this load this job to run and then in the end after it's finished running i will go our results so it's running we got our results so the next thing we're going to do is to again resume all these loads so we resume them so basically we've got all four loads included and then um so we can then go and call it all loads so basically all loads continue okay submit and then we'll see what is going to happen. So as part of the verification process, this step-by-step -step verification. So you simplify the loading, do one case and see what you get. And then you move on to another case and on to another case. So this is how we need to do this. So let's just have a look at the values we have. So if we look at um, results of the point load, okay. So the point load, all right. So it's definitely a cantilever beam as we'll expect. So I'll go to the viewport and viewport annotation options, make this legend much bigger, maybe something like 18, so that we can see clearly what we're trying to do. Um, and then I'm going to turn off some of the commentaries, just leave the triad, which is the X, Y axis, Y, Z triad, triad and the legend. So we have a cleaner and then we go to view, um, ODB display option and render the profile. So we see our model, what we have tried to do. So it looks, it looks okay. So now what next we need to do with this is basically to look at the U in the Y direction. Okay. So U in the Y direction. So we're getting 7.634 times 10 to the power minus two. So we're going to compare that with what we get analytically. Okay. So here analytically we get 7.619 numerically we get 7.6 you know 3 4 so there's a little slight change but at least it's in that window of what we would expect so we'll do the same for the moment load so look at um, result so for the moment so the result for the moment and we switch again to u2 which is what we are using to verify so we're getting a value 
in the red direction of a positive 1.714 so let's compare that with analytical and here we get 1.7143 so they are spot on with this case so there's not much difference between these two so let's then move on and try the third case so if we move on to the third case which is the distributed load so we're expecting minus 4.571 so if we this show the the load the result from the distributed load case so and then we switch to you in the third direction second direction so we get minus 4.58 the other one was minus 4.57 so again comparable slight difference in the result then finally the triangular load so again we look at the triangular load the triangular load in the u2 direction gives us a value of minus 1.835 now if we compare that with okay so that was 1.829 is the ideal but we got minus 1.835 so again still comparable in, in that window so what happens when we put all of them together so our value becomes a positive 3.1238 would that mean so we we'll look at the all load case result all load case so in the u2 direction which is what we're really using u2 direction so our goal value is 3.09 the other one was 3.12 so still there's a slight difference i mean the essence of what i'm trying to show you in all these cases is the impact the impact of having this different numerical and analytical and, and you need to be aware of that um, when you're trying to do simulations like this to understand that numerically you may have a different value from your analytical but you have to quantify what the error level would be in all these cases and and this is so if we then go ahead and tabulate these things so let's go ahead and tabulate it and build an excel sheet that shows this result okay so here we are you know so i've compiled the the loading type the different load types the analytical predictions from them and the numerical predictions from them for all of them individual and collectively and calculated the error so if you basically the error is calculated by saying okay the numerical minus the analytical divided by the analytical so if you see here so basically this minus that divided by that so that gives us you know significant so this is less than a percent you know one one fifth of a percent error so quite small error even the highest error which is coming from when you combine all the load is still just about one percent error which is not bad but you have to bear this in mind this is the advantage of, of numerical comparing with analytical so you make these comparisons so as to be able to in the end arrive at the conclusion like we have done here to show that yes numerical can do a very good job of predicting analytical values and this is a validation of your numerical setup so once you've done this validation then you can go ahead and use whatever um, numerical setup you're using for your design because at least you've shown in this case that it's doing a good job of predicting to very very little um, error because there are reasons why this error happened but that's a, a different subject for another video so that's really all that i wanted to talk about and you know if this is the kind of content that you like please do subscribe to to my channel uh, getting started with modeling channel and um, and click the notification button so when videos like this are made you'll be the first to see it if you also have ideas about videos that you would like me to make please put it in the comment section and i will be happy to review them and try and see if i can make those videos to help you get started with modeling once again my name is dr michael okreke and um, i'll see you in the next video have a lovely day bye